U.S. or Japanese. So I'm, I'm very satisfied with, with how he's been doing. I've got, uh, he works harder than anybody else on the crew. And, uh, you know, it really shows, and he's, he's very prepared. He's, he's got some challenging things to do on this mission. He's very prepared to do that. Kind of a tag team here, David Hirsch, also from NHK, but for uh, Mr. Hoshide. Why, for people who don't do space for a living, why would the people of Japan or the people of the world really be interested, or should they be interested, in Kibo? I think, um, first of all, the, the Japanese lab is uh, built for science activities. But not just for that, but uh, I think it uh, uh, broadens the horizon. It gives more capability, and people can go out and uh, do more things. And uh, that just expands uh, a lot of uh, potentials, I believe. Uh, Mark Corot from the Houston Chronicle. This is a spacewalk question. During one of the spacewalks, I think you're working with a nitrogen tank assembly. And the uh, the arm swings out way out past the nose, and I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about how you train for that. And Mike, since you've been out before, um, how do you sort of reconcile whatever you train and the reality of that? What are sort of the differences that make if that makes sense? Oh, it does because the the, the reality is very different from the uh, the kind of training that we do. Most of our spacewalk training is done in the big the big training pool, which is 40 foot deep pool where we can simulate a lot of the aspects and the choreography for the mission. But when you get on the end of the arm, uh, it, we, it, we, we don't have the capability in the pool to swing this 80-foot arm. We call it, you know, it's like a windshield wiper maneuver. It's, reach, it's going full reach from the starboard side of the station over to the port side of the station. And uh, Ronnie's going to be on the end clutching that 500-some pound uh, uh, NTA, the nitrogen tan transfer assembly, or uh, tank assembly. and. Uh, we, the, the biggest, the, the best training we've done for that is really the virtual reality uh, lab that we have here at JSC where they can put you in the place and you're wearing the helmet so you can look out and see what it really looks like. The reality, uh, I was on the arm on my last flight and the reality is uh, just breathtaking to, uh, to see what it's like. You cannot see, of course, this arm that's sort of behind you. It's just you out there in the middle hanging on. So. One, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's, you know, the, the EVAs that we're going to conduct are, are very challenging and they're a lot of work. And when I think ahead and think about the mission and I think all the things I'm looking forward to, there's a lot of things I'm, I'm really looking forward to, but I think what I'm looking forward to most is this maneuver. Uh, if you think about it, I'm going to be on the end of the arm, and as we're doing this windshield wiper maneuver right here at the top, I'll be 80 feet above the station, looking down at the station, looking down at the earth, and, you know, I, I imagine. If I'm not overwhelmed with the, just with the view that uh, we've had up until that point, um, I imagine that's going to be a pretty significant event. And, uh, and I put my complete trust in Karen here. She's going to be, <laughs> she's going to be driving the arm and, uh, and uh, getting us over to the other side of the station where we need to pick up the new nitrogen.